you're likely skeptical about self-improvement. I put in the four years of hard work to tell you if it's worth it or not. It has dramatically changed my life for the better, a thousand percent. So I'm gonna tell you my story, which is probably gonna calm down some of your skepticism, but I know it's only anecdotal evidence. There are gonna be more questions later on in the video that we're gonna address. Let me cut to the chase for y'all. Around my high school years, I grew up largely anxious, socially anxious, anxious in general. People watching this video right now are probably like, oh, you don't have social anxiety, you don't know what it feels like. Okay, listen, I couldn't get down the freshman hallway of my school without shedding a tear. Listen, I know what this stuff feels like, man. Every single time I had to walk through that hallway, man, I was filled with trepidation just because I was nervous about what other people were thinking about me. I had difficulty holding eye contact, like that was a struggle for me. And people who know me from back in the day were like, nah, you were, you were a natural man, man. They didn't know what the fudge was going on. I me, mean, my hands were shaking, bro. All these problems began to manifest in ways that I, I didn't even expect. I never grew up with a speech impediment and I never stuttered in my sentences. Around high school, I started stuttering for no reason, stumbling over my words. Similarly, my confidence was in the dumps. I didn't know how to hold myself and it didn't feel like it back then, but my lifestyle was jacked up, man. I played games, the food that I ate wasn't the greatest. Not that it didn't taste good or anything, the nutritional value was just bad. I wasn't absorbing all the nutrients that I should have been absorbing when I was around that age. I wasn't eating food that was appropriate for growth. I was eating food that was appropriate for coping with pain, stress, anxiety, comfort food. My habits back then weren't good either. I slept with my phone right next to me. If you sleep with your phone right next to you, do yourself a favor, put it in another room. And, and, and if you don't have that luxury, put it pretty far away from you. You know what I'm saying? Even if you use it as your alarm, it's gonna be more incentive to get your butt out of the bed in the morning. I was chronically sad. Like one day I wanted to take some of my journal entries and read it in front of y'all. Because sometimes I go back to the journal entries I had like two, three years ago and I'm like, why is every journal entry sad? I look at my journal entries now, they're not that way at all. And finally, man, I just didn't have any spiritual connection. I thought I did. I claimed to be a Christian like two, three years ago, but my peers wouldn't consider me Christian. To make a long story short, man, those are some dark times. But all I had through those times was just an insatiable hunger to get out of that mental hell. I didn't like being there. It was not fun waking up in that mental space every single day. A leaf just hit me in the, in the shoulder. It wasn't fun waking up in that mental space every day. So I was willing to do whatever it took to get out of that space. Read books, meditate, I didn't freaking care. You know, if I had to do something stupid in front of everybody, so be it, I've done it before. I started reading books that I knew I could get something from that would help me on my journey. I started searching up all this workout science, workout routines that I could try to see where I could get to where I wanted to go. It feels like I've been working out my whole life, to be honest. I was freestyling in the shower for two years. Man, anything I could get my hands on, any activity the self-improvement spear was telling me to do, man, I was on that stuff. And I haven't stopped since then. And I'm a thousand percent better for it. A thousand percent better for it. It's hard to put into words what the self-improvement sphere has done for me. I think it'll do the same for you as well. Because if it weren't for those people who had the courage to make a book explaining things in black and white, that people can take to improve their lives, man. To be honest, I don't think I would be here right now. And I'm not talking about being alive, just talking in front of a camera, trying to get people to do something with their life. The name is self-evident, but we should talk about this anyway. What is self-improvement? I describe self-improvement as a conquest to improve your character and ability to manifest yourself competently in the world. I use the word conquest to describe the journey because it's not freaking easy, man. A lot of people aren't really on self-improvement because this stuff is hard. It requires discipline. You think you can say, oh, I'm on self-improvement now and then three years you'll be dramatically different or whatever. No, that requires effort. It requires discipline. It requires denying yourself instant gratification. Harder than you think. Much like a journey or an adventure, they're gonna be your downs. You're gonna have your ups. It's hard sticking to a sleep schedule. It's hard standing out amongst your peers. It's hard to sit down and read that book with a room full of nothing. You need to develop character and skills to alleviate the hardships of the future for yourself and for those around you. Like I said, that's hard. It requires discipline, courage, tenacity, 
Shoot, I could go down a list of all the attributes that it demands. Second question I want to address, and I think this is the big question. Is self-improvement going to work for everyone? Holistically, I'll say yes, but it's not a one size fits all approach. The people who are already so super aware of all their surrounding, like hyper aware, those people might not even benefit from meditation. The fact is this, people are gonna grow from different self-improvement activities at different intervals. Also, people are in different stages of their life. For youngsters like me, oh, <laughs> I encourage you to go all in on the self-improvement thing. For somebody who's really selfless and loves giving themselves to others, they're gonna have to learn how to get a little bit of a backbone. In contrast, the people who are really selfish, only think about themselves, and are really hard and emotionally unavailable, they're gonna have to learn just the opposite. This is not a one-size-fits-all approach. And that beautiful transition leads me to my last point. What is self-improvement done correctly? It depends on the person, and it depends on how much you want out of it. You can choose to remove whatever hinders you and keep soaring higher to provide for yourself and for your peoples. Or you can taper that effort, and as a result, some of the unpleasantries are gonna impact your life simply due to your inaction. At the end of the day, it's all what you choose to do. My last word about this is that time is gonna pass anyway. You can spend your free time on doing something worthwhile, or you can just waste away. Hey man, I love y'all. Make good decisions, love and listen to others, and get right. Man, we out. Yeah.